All right, everyone, we're looking at class 14 today. We're gonna to get started with some hip escapes because we're gonna be using a hip escape to get out of the mount with our, our knee elbow hip escape today, okay? Um, gonna continue on to some of these uh, threads of mounted arm bar and uh, taking a look at some scenarios with that and the side headlock defense, uh, connecting some dots there as well. And, um, you know, it'll be a good class. So uh, let's get started with uh, hip escapes. So uh, just on your back, going backwards here, and we're just gonna be hip escaping. We also, everybody in the jiu-jitsu community for some reason calls it shrimping, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you kind of look like a shrimp when you do it. But yeah, just hip escapes going backwards, yes. And really emphasize, yeah, driving that knee to the floor, inverting that heel, yes. Good, reaching for the toes, nice. Good, nice. Okay, now turn it around, just stay down there, okay? Um, now lay back down. Here's what I want you to do. Um, shoulder walk back and about the third or fourth time, hip escape. Good. Smaller shoulder walks. Get somebody on top of you's idea and then hip escape. Good, okay. Now uh, turn it back around. So with a partner, okay, laying down here, I want you to cross frame on the shins. Okay, so go ahead and do that. We're gonna use this frame on our escape today and I want you to hip out, boom. And then I come up and he frames, hip out, nice. Frames, frames, good, keep it up, very nice. Okay, lay here, head facing that way. Okay, so I, we're, we're laying down. I want you to um, just stationary hip escapes side to side, but I really want you to focus on inverting the heel and driving that knee to the mat, right? And then, Good, and just pull yourself back. Live, live toes, use the balls of your feet on this. Good, don't take too much slack out. Just slide along the floor. Let me give you a slider off along the floor. That's it, and slide back. See, now you're doing forward and backward here. Okay, freeze there. Remember how we did this a few classes back? It's kind of like a side fall, right? So go to one side. Let's start on one side, just drive there to freeze here. And then kind of go up. You're not going to slap the mat with your hands, but go up and land with your feet in this position on the other side. Good, good. A little less drastic flowery motion with the legs. Not 100% wrong, right? Just like, bop. Just kind of take what you're doing and come up and over. Yes. Let's switch in your hips. Nice. There you go, good, time. All right, now, the last thing is, you know, you're using these concepts against somebody being on top of you, okay? So what you want, like I outweigh, what you want to be able to do is bear my weight and still be able to move, to still be able to get on your side. Because pinning, when you're pinned, you're on your back, okay? So turn your heel out, other way. We'll, we'll do it facing this way first. Turn this heel out a little bit, good. And then you're driving off of it and inverting that knee, okay? Drive, okay? Now, here, mm -hmm. adjust a little bit if you need to. Drive, drive, it's from here to here, right? Oh, that feels way better, right? Okay, and again, you're just thinking about this drives here, drives that shin, and the ball of our foot and heel are turning and inverting as we do this. Here. Good, let's turn this way. Turn to me. Good. See, that's good. Because what you've got to worry about is if you get on your side, start working out, right? And you're not even all the way on your side. When you get on your side and you start working out, that you don't wanna get turned back on your back. So maybe be wedging your head and trying to do those, turning your face, trying to do those exact same things, okay? We call this the heart starter drill. It's just like you're pumping someone's chest, right? I put both my hands right there, just do the mountain climbers on your hip, right? So from there, turn in one more time. Good, find your base here. Nice. Now, hip escape back. See, you can still move. 
and I was overcommitted, right? So that's kind of from our uh, back position, right? That's kind of the backward hip escape fundamentals, right? Is that's how we use them. From seated, we, we can do some other things like uh, with our, our technical stand up and stuff like that. But we need to be able to shrimp on our back, hip escape, forward and backward, that drill with the partner on the shin, teach us to frame and do that, also very good. And then this drill teaches how to like deal with somebody having weight on us, okay? The shoulder walk, we've seen that in previous classes. We use that for submission defense, when somebody's stacking us on our neck and guard. Um, we also use it to escape the high mount. So if somebody's got our uh, arms up and I know like what we've seen in some of the arm bars we're doing, you can still achieve that, okay? So good on the hip escapes. Now, you know, we've been, been doing a lot of punch defense the last several classes, which is, um, again, you know, we're not trying to teach the jiu-jitsu student to be a boxer or uh, a Muay Thai practitioner, a knock Muay, that's what the uh, Thai boxer is called. Um, we're not, you know, tr trying to make them a Golden Gloves champion or anything like that. We have classes for that. But here's the thing, you may run into somebody that had some amateur boxing when they were a kid and then they grew up to be a criminal, unfortunately, right? Um, or a high school wrestler or anything like that. So, you know, you need to have some takedown defense, you need to have some punch defense, some base, all of that, right? And if we talk about, we like hitting in here with hammer fist, elbows, palms, right? Because the likelihood that since we don't do boxing or Muay Thai or kickboxing that we break our hands, right, is higher. Okay, so it's lower risk injury if we think hammer fist, elbows, and palm heels. Okay, now we're just gonna just overview um, these uh, drills. Uh, we'll uh, defend straight punches to the face and body. We'll defend round punches or hooks to the head and body. We'll just go through that real quickly from just a, a natural posture. Okay, just a natural posture here. And before we do this, you know these are called flinch drills. Right, so they're kind of already too serious here. Okay, we're gonna do the game. Oh, no, just kind of here. That's the game. Oh. I think you got it. All right, your turn. Awesome. Have you ever played this? Not often. I went. Oh, my, yeah, oh, it's not my, my hand, hand, bro. Come on, you get another chance since you don't know. Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 you're a bite belt at it already, are you? That's good. That's good. Okay, so hey, that's the same sort of thing. Remember how I was like, oh, I'm going to make him flinch. Well, I was like touching underneath your palm and stuff. I'm like, you feel it? You feel it? Mm -hmm. And then you started kind of doing that to me a little bit. Not, not, not as much. I was like, you know, I'm just trolling on you. Okay, but that's a, that's a flinch game. You know, like there are games like that, like childhood games. That's a childhood game, right? Um, so that's the same sort of idea that we're working with when we defend these punches to the face, punches to the body, because we don't know what pattern those are gonna come in. This, again, it's self-defense unpredictable, right? So we just kind of have to be able to adapt. Like you didn't know if I was gonna go say one time, one both. I tried to go across and you got it, right? So that's just kind of how it may be, right? So just a, neutral, uh, a natural posture, you know, you're not, Knees bent, defensive base, or anything like that, but your hands are up. Okay? Here, I'm gonna start just trying to touch your face. This could result in an eye poke or something like that. So, here, right? And just do more of the forearm and twist and add weight to it. Here, here, here. Okay? Now, um, here's the thing. Um, if you've ever had a friend that um, did jiu jitsu and they concealed carry also, and then you were like, they are over at your house hanging out. You're like, oh, and they're like, whoa, bro, bro. You know, like, I got a gun or whatever. That's happened multiple times to me. The people I hang out with, like, you know, whatever. So, um, but think about this. Think about somebody grabbing. Like, that's something law enforcement has to worry about. But, um, you know, it might be your keys to your car. I don't wear a chain wallet. That could be an application. But, um, you know, just somebody reaching and grabbing right there. Right? This allows you to deflect that, okay? And just a little, just a little turn. Here, here, 
punch in the face, you, you, okay? So that could be punches, it could be face touches, it could be grabs along the belt line, okay? So I want you to think about those contexts back here. Now, defending round punches or, or hooks, we'll think about them as slaps also, okay? So here we're gonna meet it with our forearm. Okay. It, but like lean into it, instead of cover block today, we're just gonna lean into oh. it. Yes, lean into it, right? And then when we go to the body, we're gonna turn and look at your palm, just here, here. Good. Kind of, kind of, don't reach and then lean, do both at the same time, right? So that way you don't have to go all the way out and then come, it's like a, I don't have to go as far out because I'm doing both at the same time, okay? Good, I was trying to grab at your lapel each time, right? Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's just kind of uh, the, the basics, right? Defending the, the straight, just center line right in front of you, and then defending the outside, okay? One other one, and just from this natural posture, all I want you to think about doing is, is going down and up, like, like a, a weave, okay? But we're just in a level change and then come up, okay? Um, so just from this neutral stance, which we don't really ever do in like a, a striking class here, right? So this is more just self-defense and it's a, it's a haymaker or a round strike. So here I'm coming, oh, nice. Good. Yeah, you can if you need to, right? You can, or you can just kind of come back to center. It's almost like a, a circle if you come back to center. It's like a U, and you're like, oh, I feel like I'm over here, so I, I, I should step. Right. Never a bad idea, right? That may be your opportunity. Oh, now I'm in my, my base over here, right? Because here's the thing. Why are we doing it this way? We don't always have time to get into base. So we have to be able to do this stuff from here. Right, Dude, just like somebody who's sitting out their class and they walk up on us, it's like, hey, right, what, what's, the, what's the problem here? And they're like, well, I don't know. Right, and then, okay, well, I, outside, I got the inside covered, I can go here. So those, that's a, a really good option. We don't always have time to be in our defensive posture. We will look at that a little bit though, okay? Um, so <clears throat> we got just level changing and weaving under that haymaker or a hook, okay? They come on the same line, horizontal, head height. So um, now, we are gonna introduce one new concept to our striking defense, right? So just wanted to review some and then introduce one new concept. And this is the new concept, um, blocking a groin strike, right? So like, for example, I was at a camp this weekend and um, we were doing several kicks throughout the two days that were brought up as being applicable to, as a groin strike, right? So yeah, that would be terrible, right? Um, if, if, uh, if that happened and then you were dealing with that pain while also having to you know, fight for your life. So this is um, a really uh, cool option. I'm gonna show it and we're gonna just kind of mimic it with on my shins and I'm gonna go grab my prop over here okay. so you don't break my leg, okay? This would be the same uh, thing that we teach this in class with, okay? Because here's the thing. Other classes, you'd be like, hey, oh, let me get my shin pads on. But we don't have shin pads in self-defense, right? Uh, but we also don't want to just like gnarl our shins up, to, you know, and we want to condition them. It's a great way to do it. Okay, so this here. What you're going to do, and I'm going to kick this side first because we're learning, so I'm telling you, right? And I want you to, on that leg, close the door. Don't do anything right now. And I'm not going to kick you in the groin, but... Don't do anything, I'm just stimulating you. Know? Let me look cool on the, boom, that. And if you do what you're about to do, imagine me kicking your shin and knee. You do striking classes and I'm always telling the class, I'm like, don't kick them in the knee. It's for you, not for them, right? Now, if you kick somebody in the knee like this, right, you can cause some damage, right? But typically when somebody round kicks in the knee, it hurts the shin of the kicker more right or the foot so um i've even had somebody do one of those stomp style kicks on me like this and i checked and um it broke their foot right so just like a, in a weird like it was a fluke deal type of, of a thing and they had like a little nerve issue with it like 
but it, it, it jacked it up, right? And it was just like, cause it was bone on bone, right? So what we're doing here is just in this neutral position, we're closing the door, closing the door, okay? So coming this side, boom, yeah, do that. Boom, it's terrible, okay, stay right there. My prop. Okay, so here we're coming up. Good. And then we'll go the other side. Sometimes we'll have two of these and I can just kind of simulate. Um, otherwise, I can just have him alternate. Like, hey, you're going to go that side even though I'm just here. Oh, do the other side now. Alternate. Oh, oh, gotcha. There you go. It's terrible. Yeah, just close the door. Okay. What you're doing here is you're turning your hip inward, right? Sometimes we'll even see this where we do both feet turned inward like this, okay? So we're closing our hips, right? Sometimes you see times where we step and open our hips for techniques. It's just the basic functions of our anatomy, right? So, but a lot of times we just, we walk around like this and we don't really think, we're just don't have to stand this way, that way, whatever. But okay, here, when I close my hip, I'm closing the door there to the groin strike. Now, remember how we saw the push defense for the rear clinch, right? So, here, if I push your shoulders, you raise your elbows. So we were talking about rear clinch, I gotta try and grab your head right here or something, you just sit around, no big deal. But what if I'm um, right here, lean, lean forward so I don't put, push you off balance, right? What if I did that? All right, so yes, you close the door. Close the door. Oh, that'd be terrible. Close the door. Close the door. Close the door. See? And then, so for, you know, like we see with our side clinch. Okay, we got this take down. They pull your head down, that. They lift you up. They turn. They push. They pull. Throughout the whole course, you, you can just look at all of those things and say, wow, that's a side clinch fundamentals overview. If you, if you tallied up all of the things you learned from there, right? I want you to think about the push defense in the same way. We could take the back from there. They go over or under, right? When we're here, there's no headbutt, right? There's no elbow strike. Without taking my back, here, right? I want you to um, essentially turn here if I try and come over or under, okay? I try and come over, under. Right, do this to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm here trying to try and come under on this side. Oh. See, so you can you can kind of teeter with that and clear an arm, take it back, whatever. It just kind of depends on what they're doing. They might be trying to elbow, overhand, hit. But the thing is, I'm pushing elbows up. I can't do any of that. Yeah, look, now you're going to one of your clinches. <laughs> right? That's good. Well, that's why you're here. Good. You can use it tomorrow or today. Right? It's still early. It's not even noon yet. So, um, that is uh, the, the groin strike defense. Right? Um, I don't care if you are a man or woman. <laughs> you do not want to get hit there. Right? Like, it, it sucks being a guy. I mean, but I've, like, it's it's happened, like, with, with Cora multiple times like it like she does it, she's not exempt just because she's a, a female from getting kicked there on accident it's like when that happens in the gym we're sparring it's on accident right but here you know somebody's purposely trying to do us do this to us okay so and it, it, just think about this slogan also you're never going to be ready it, to be in a street fight right like just think about it that way like, and let's say you were ready, you knew the altercation was coming and you were able to, hey, come, like, and then start, but they're gonna do something that you weren't ready for. And you you may even, in reflection, because it works the same way with our fighters, like, like how he's gonna be fighting, right? And he's gonna, after the fight, he's gonna realize some stupid mistake that he made. Six weeks later, it'll just pop into his mind laying in bed at night. It's happened to me. And be like, man, why did, I know what to do there. Well, I just wasn't ready. So that, that needs to be our mentality, right? We train for the days that we hope never happen. Um, and then sometimes we go and fight and compete. We simulate those days. All right. Um, okay. 
Now, what we need to take a look at is a review of our ball and chain drill. Such a cool uh, little set of drills. Um, and it teaches us some very important principles, such as maintaining distance, timing the clinch, and closing distance, right? So anytime, like we work from here a lot, two hands distance, okay? Once I tie this belt into a knot, he'll be safe from here. All right, measure again. See, you're safe. I made it a little longer this time, all right? Just a little bit, all right? So you're barely safe. See, I almost got your belt knot. All right, so here's the thing. Without, let's just review it without, like I, what I ultimately wanna do is get you moving backwards and then doing it. So I love your base. Let's do it first from here, yes. And when you come in, hands up against the horizontal swing. But it is hand them up, that's fine. Oh, second guess yourself, I kind of kind of caught you. That was a sword and it cut your arm off. All right, we're using our imagination. Yes, good. Just see, yeah, face in the chest and then you grab over my arms or anything like that, right? Uh, like a second ago, you did really good about going over my arm, kind of like an over a tricep and adding some weight to it. You can do that. You can just grab around the body. Um, anything is fine, right? Just initiate clinch. Head in the chest, grab. Should I apply the uh, joint hands and then shoulder? You can do that. Yeah. You can do that. Like, it, it, you know, that's great but if you want to go around the body, mm -hmm. okay? And it may feel a little weird because my hands are down because of this drill we're doing. Okay. But here's another thing. Watch this. I miss my overhand. Hands down. But I'm also going to expose my back to you. Okay? So it's situation, right? So this is just a drill. Um, go ahead one more time on the horizontal. Good. Yes. Good. Now let's go figure eight. Nice. Good. And grab me after. Mm -hmm. See right there, and then look. So you kind of got over both my arms. You're like, oh, it's weird. And I'm what? Now let's kind of drop you for position. Right? It can easily become because oh man, he grabbed me. I was just trying to hit him, and I didn't expect that. And it's like, yeah, not only did I grab you, buddy, I'm about to take you down. Right? So you're going to be getting that next position, and you know many of those positions already. It's just a, my arms are down. It's kind of weird. But um, side clinch, front body lock, side body lock. Right? Rear clinch. Are you control on the rear clinch in the last several classes? Right? That's what we want, right? That is such a good, those following drills from the back. Oh, can I lay on you? That's great. And so you have all these clinches. And, and again, on this figure eight, I miss an overhand. Whoa! You come in and grab me. Look, you got the clinch. Oh, no. But you got it nonetheless. Okay? So... We've seen this in, in some of the earlier classes. Now let's uh, do this. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing. Move forward here. A little bit more good. Measure. Good. And I just want you moving back while raising your hands and then timing against the horizontal swing. Step in and clinch. Yes, yes. Move back forward here so I don't go off the, the video. You trying to go under your arms or does it doesn't matter? Eh, just whatever. Even if you, I know if you're, 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 in your mind, you're like, why would I grab somebody here? I know. Right? <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Watch this. Right? Or, so you're always in a position to apply things. A lot of times, you know, I've heard countless, and we're doing some of this in, in very, uh, very uh, classes in the very near future. Here's the thing. You and I don't have to worry about getting grabbed that way. Some women and, and kids do, right? Uh, like, that's like the, uh, you know, or somebody dragging you by one arm. This is more applicable. This happens when I roll and stuff, right? This, we've seen a bunch of. 
But a lot of times what we see is people discounting these positions like this, like a, like a human shield hostage situation, or um, you know, standing rear naked choke, or over the arms. And each, each thing has its application. Here, here, even here. Even though I don't like it, all right? There's still things we can do, all right? I got an overhook, start coming into the side. Okay, so there's always an option. We're not overcomplicating, it is grabbing, all right? If you're in here, put your hands down like I had my hands up, and then you grab. And then, oh, now you're in, but you really enjoy it. They are gonna be moving too. Any event panel wasn't ready for that. Remember that side. Okay? Now, figure eight, moving backwards. Yes, good, good. Uh huh. That's fun. All right? And once you do that, um, you can add weight on this side and kind of, yes, no? Very good. Okay. Now, defensive posture. Four point base, just like you had earlier. Okay, I'm gonna step forward, swinging here. Good. Measure. Good. Move back as I move forward, maintaining the distance. Right, like put measure here, and then step back. Okay, and step back. All right, so after about that third step, I want you to close distance, okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Step forward. Now figure eight. Very good. Very good. Another thing that keeps happening because of this drill is not just that my hands are down. It's when you come in, it's very realistic. My, one of my arms is pinned to my body, right? Um, and it, just a reference again, because it's just recent, but that hand pinning someone's arm to their body in a self-defense context was a keynote theme, right? So um, those are things to think about, right? And think about when you do something like pin someone's arm to their body, you want to add weight to that, right? If anytime we get that, that type of control, we have to form our connection. <clears throat> Right, every one of our clinches, add weight, find a connection. Well, how can I can I get to that connection point from, from a clinch perspective, okay? Um, we have one more action, one more, okay? This one, everything that we did so far, if you think about it, was after I tried to hit you, right? So you, you knew um, I was attacking, you evaded it, and good job. Now this is gonna be before. This is, this is my mindset. I'm like, uh, yeah, oh, you were about to hit me? And I'm not gonna let you swing in this. Like, if, if I see you draw back, it's go time, okay? So what I want you to do, get, get, uh, move forward a little bit, get in your base. That's gonna be it. When you see me do that, it's time to clinch, measure. Oh, wait, 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 we're gonna move back while we do it. Oh, no. oh, there's an element here. Yeah, yeah, you were figuring it out. You hadn't seen this drill before, right? You got some new things in here and then some review. Measure. Good, see, we got the back on that one. Replenish. Nah! Okay, go back. Try it once from right here. Go back. Better. Better, as soon as you see me move. I'm gonna be a statue. Start this one, hold on. Now one more time, moving back. Oh, beautiful. Look, you can slip right under. That's, you know, would have got the rear clinch on that as well. 
And we see like on the walking over and man, replenish all day long. Okay, so again, some new things and some review. Just like we'll see in future classes, um, you know, you can't, uh, you can't, if somebody has a good push defense, you can't keep punching at your elbow. You can't clinch. You can't headlock. And that's what I've got to shut down on every standing adversary. They can't, they can't hit me with the kitchen punches, knees, or elbows. They can't headbutt me. They don't get to off balance me. They definitely can't take me down, right? Like these are just uh, headlock, no way. That involves no base and posture on my part. But we have to train for those situations. And today, we will see a takedown where your head's been pulled down from the side head. And as we do these types of drills, like you were talking, like, hey, what? I'm coming this way. And I may, you know, you may have one side up and one not, and I may get a side head lock on you. Anytime you enter a side clinch and I start trying to grab your head, this situation may occur. Also, you know a guy that trains here named Joel. Imagine if you, for real, ran into a Joel who's 265 and, and an athlete, right? Like say, before he ever did jujitsu, he played football his whole life and was playing college football when we met him, right? Imagine if Joel wanted to pull your head down from right here. You know all this cool th uh, stuff that we've been doing in this class. Do you think you could just stop him? I sure hope so. I mean, yeah, okay, but let's say, you know, you you turned into a blue belt for a second. You knew too much, so you didn't, you're like, which one should I do, right? And uh, then he pulled you down because he is like one of the strongest people I know, <laughs> okay? So this is for when your head gets pulled down, right? And see, see I kind of oh, my, whipped my uh, leg back to kind of help break your base down. But this is, this is not something that we, is the same as what we've seen on the ground recently. We can't fight back against that. If we do, we will be super sore tomorrow, right? So once somebody gets your head pulled down, you relate on all the other cool stuff you know. We got to have those plans. Like, you know what? I know a lot of people whose uh, house is never burned down. And I know a lot of people that their house is never burned down, but they have a fire evacuation plan in case it does for their family, right? Like, hey, if, if you ever wake up and there's smoke in the house, here is what each family member is to do, right? And then they live their whole life and house never burns down. You, but you plan for the worst, okay? So when I pull your head down, um, what I want to see is um, a sacrifice throw. We do sacrifice throws. Um, we've seen one in the rear clinch, the, the valley drop, Tani Atoshi, where we just fall on our side. It's great. Um, just a, you know, for a few classes back. So um, with this, we are going to kind of go under between your legs. Like you were talking about it with me before we started the class. You're like, oh, it's kind of like diving under. Like, because that's a term that we use that describes emotion. So you were like, it's like that. Yes, it is. Okay, then we want to think about one other thing here. Because, look, this, this intellectual stuff or information, details, we always called it details when I was growing up. These details, um, they're the meat and potatoes. Timing is important on every technique. Just because you were late defending the side headlock does not mean that this technique doesn't have timing. You do, first of all, you do it when you're late on the other side headlock. That's timing detail one, right? When your head's being pulled down. The highest polish of this takedown is you being able to perform it as your head's being pulled down. Okay, so kind of, kind of two perspectives there. So like some people would be like, oh, I couldn't get my posture and base inside headlock. They pulled my head down. And it's like, well, hey, do this technique. Well, you know, when? Well, they're pulling your head down. We can do it right now, right? And then it's like, well, okay, for the future, now that you know this, we're learning it today, okay? For the future, now you know, okay, well, this is better applied when they are pulling my head down, right? So for example, I'm pulling your head down like, just relax, like this. That's when you would do the technique. As I'm pulling you down. Not, I got you stuck down there and I'm dropping weight on your spinal cord, okay? Because that's what happens, right? Like you get in that bully side headlock 
man, I like just our weight difference alone, me dropping that into the back of your neck on your spine. It sucks. It sucks. Okay. But this is like, this is one of the stupidest things too. Let's think about it objectively. Okay. If I start trying to hit, I mean, I may hit your nose, kind of try and hide your nose. So like just to get, yeah. Now I'm going to hit your, your skull and break my head. Okay. Like it's not. And then, oh, I don't want your head to get out. I'm going to hold you with both hands. But that's when it's going to be that squeeze and pressure. You already know a little bit from the one on the ground of things to do. Okay? So let's overview this. You've got me here. Okay? Now, um, first off, what I've got to worry about, let's turn a little bit here, is you throw on a, a potential knee at my face. Boom. All right? So not only does that uh, potentially block against that situation, um, it's gonna, it's gonna work as a, a little bit of a lever as uh, I go to perform this technique, okay? So, um, you know, you're, you're pulling me down. Now what I've gotta do is step and change the direction I'm facing here, okay? So, like you're pulling my head down that way. So that, yeah, see, that's the timing. I'm like, oh, that's when I go, right? So here, I need to turn my foot and let go real quick. And then this, lean that way, like that. I need to hang my hips, turn this way. Lean that way again. I'm hanging my hips off of him from here. Lean that way again, so I don't, I don't go down. Good, okay? Now, again, I'm, I tell him to lean that way so I don't have to go grab a heavy bag like I did in that one class, <laughs> right? But he's not leaning when you perform this. He's pulling your head down. He is actually pulling you the direction you need to go to take the throw, okay? So, here, when he pulls down, I need to be sure and step and turn, and then it's my hips hanging all the way off of his hips. Boom, grab my head. Here, both hands on the side. Step over, lean forward. And there's our mounted arm bar is a review, right? We saw that from our side headlock escape classes. And we also saw that last class from just mount situation, okay? Now here, somebody can pull me over. If he really tries, start, step that foot over. Yes, this is not good. Pull back, and then you'll be right back where you were. So here, try and pull me over. Hard, huh? Not impossible. If you were Joel, you might could do it. So I need to hang out here. I need to break this headlock, which I already did. Right there, bring your knees in and finish. Always hit the thumb, the end of the lever on the arm bar. It takes away one of their common escapes, okay? So, a, a, a big deal on this is I want, we'll do this, um, I want the leg that's behind to be straight. And I want the other foot, remember I was talking closed hips earlier? It steps like between my legs in a closed hip situation, right? So um, I want you to think about that, okay? Now, um, we'll do it one more time. So I'm in on the side clinch and, and you're pulling me down here. Okay, so I was in my four point base. This foot's open hip right now. I'm gonna step and turn closed hip and hang my weight. Remember, you're pulling down. Oh, that's my timing. Here, okay. Hands on the side. That's a little bit of a cross face pressure. This elbow is uh, uh, blocking his hip wedged step over to a technical mount and lean forward into his neck. And that's our arm bar. Okay? So, let's see here's Micah. Which side do you want to be on? I want you to do your dominant side just for this part. I can move this hand on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's good. Or the other side. You can do the other side. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's the side that I want. So, um, 
So here you hit bone, right? And I, I got you down though. That's and then too, like see what I said? Right? You don't want to take any of that. But this too is a, this is a connection point for you. Right now, now when you're here and you start without even stepping that foot, just start hanging your hips off me. Yeah. Swing them in an arc that way. Yeah, see? I was like, I got a bounce by that. I like it. Right? So here, I got you down, right? And your head's kind of tucked in because that's like the direction we're going to be turning. Head goes, body follows. I want you to step that foot and close hip, turn those toes between my feet. Straight leg in the back, hang your hips as you do that. Go. Yes. Come up. Let's get scoot over a little bit. All right. Both hands on that block this side first. Hold on. We'll be a little more particular today. And then step over. Uh-huh. Nice. And then lean forward into the neck. Arm bar. Grab, post the hand. Good. Let's do it again. We'll back up just a little bit. So you see, and look, we're still learning, right? But here's the thing. We come back in sit, you know, three months and film like a short video of this throw, you would be able to do the timing, right? You'll probably see it in a, one of the other classes in, in the meantime. But the timing is, you were doing that. You see, like, that's what I was saying earlier. Like, like yeah, oh, it, I'm kind of late, but my head's already pulled down, it sucks. It can work then. That's when it works. But the best timing is as your head's being pulled down. That's like the higher, like the more polished variation. Okay, so I pull down, block, step close tips, yes, good. Block, step over, good, nice. Okay, when you, uh, we stepped over, it kind of made my grip like go sooner, and I wanted, I kind of grabbed it back. Because it's like my, um, I've had injuries on both shoulders, they both feel really good. So I'm happy about that. Uh, better than a long time, which you wouldn't think, is if I'm 36 now, I'm getting older. But great, you know, yeah. done things to help with that. But like a, a lot of times, I'm like, when my shoulders get in weak planes, and that's what you're doing here, right? Like anytime I get you in a headlock and you know what you're doing, you're typically getting my arms up where my shoulders are very weak. We'll see that concept recur in a future class on guard passing, right? When, it's the way we do our knee slide pass. They frame, you raise their elbows up, okay? Um, so that is a side sacrifice, right? And it's from the side clinch when your head has been pulled down, right? We saw another side sacrifice, very similar, from the rear clinch when someone's leaning forward. That one, for the rear clinch, Tani Atoshi, one of the traditional 40 judo throws. This one today, Yoko Garuma. Side sacrifice is the easiest way to remember both of them. If you looked at a big list of side sacrifice throws, it would just be little nuances on how the legs were and why. And then was it from the side, the back, the front? Did you go to your back first? Did you go to your side first? That's the main things I think to take away from it because um, it is that easy. All right. So um, we got our ground techniques next. So we'll get back to that. Okay, we're gonna go over knee elbow escape fundamentals. And um, with this, I'm gonna show just the basic option that I want everybody to know. Um, it's the number one escape I teach all the students. The cool thing about this is that you can do so many variations. Like. Uh, I attended a seminar one time, it was two hours, and we did, hey, you know, Micah, you put me here. I'm under mount. You do this kind of mount to me. You do that. You do this. And every one of the eight things that you did to hold me a mount in a different way, we still did the knee elbow escape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not going that deep today, but just in, right, mm -hmm. I'm teaching a knee elbow escape seminar here in, in a few months, right? It's, a, it's um, definitely um, a very uh, fundamental technique. It's there from side control too, is what I also love, right? It, it comes up all the time. But 
we're going to go over to some basic options today. In this course, we've seen low mount in like the second class, right? Uh, we, we get that first group of three classes, we start getting into like, hey, here's the, the basics of mount. And low mount is one of those uh, ways that we teach even the beginners how to hold people, okay? So I'm going to show the basic way, and then I'm also going to show some vari variations that will work in either the main class or the review class as this comes up um, through the week in the gym uh, that deal with the low mount, right? So I'm going to show a couple variations today, but just this first one is the main one I want everybody uh, most focused on, okay? And it's using the cross frame in order to escape, okay? So <clears throat> get me here. We're gonna use our same concept we've been working on, turning your heel out to help drive this into the floor. But here's the thing. You feel how my um, uh, leg is on your ankle? Yeah. We can't have that. A lot of people teach st legs straight in the center, and there's some application on that, but you, you're kind of hooking my thigh there, right? Like we're gonna do just like what we were doing here, okay? So this is, my frame across your hip here, right? Just like we saw from underneath the front headlock or uh, the side headlock on side control. Remember how we moved our, our elbow out and frame like that? Same thing, okay? So we're here, right? So <clears throat> what I wanna do with this is I'm driving this through this space, okay? Now, if you bring your knee up, I may do something else, okay? But here, I wanna shove my knee to elbow, is I recover guard, right? You just stay kind of trying to push me down. And then this, at this point, my, my hook over here is stuck between his legs. If I turn here, I'm able to pull it out and have posture control, okay? So let's do this again. And your, your posture will be hands on the mat, okay? <clears throat> So you'll just be kind of, partners will be tabletop for this first little series, but not low chest, just kind of here. Okay. Yes, there you go, just here, right? So here, I want to drive and base, and I'm going knee to elbow. Pushing that in between, and I come up here to frame, he starts pressing down on me. I need to turn my hips all the way, all the way, and then I've got posture control with a guard where I can elbow, palm heels, elbow, hammer fist. Right, so do what? It kind of, kind of about just a side, off to the side guard, right? Um, so, um, here, head there. Okay, see I'm just here. And it may, you know, Bridge and bump your hips and make my hands go down. Build your cross frame. Bridge on your side, yes. Uh-huh, nice, good. Start turning, 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 framing. There, good. Now uh, start turning on your hips and clearing this hook. Yes. And here, get that, and then hit. Boom. All right, if you want strikes, you strike here. All right, you can, you can kind of, um, on this side, right? So you can just cock that back here, right? Or you can hold the head and pull it into an elbow there. Boom, All right? So just think, like we said, sir, palms, hammer fists, elbows. If you're on guard off to the side like that, that's what you need to be striking with if strikes are something you're thinking about, All right? Maybe just a regular gi class through the week, we wouldn't do that. Maybe we would, maybe combat jujitsu night, All right? We'll save that for Sharpie's Wednesday class. Okay, uh, here, head down again with the cross frame. Yes, right, uh, well, if you can remember here, because look how, yes, right? It'll take time to remember that, it's a nuance. It can still work without that, but that's the, see like that, see the other way can get pushed down. Right. But if you connect with it, Right, you can you can uh, you can do it just one hand like we talked about last class in the hip escape. Okay, so there, go ahead and um, on your side, drive, 
turn, Frank. Yeah, you just hit the skating. Yeah, start turning this way. Get on that hook now. Do it. Nice. Nice. Good posture control. Okay, now, that's the basic. Let's look at some other modes of hook removal from the low mount perspective. So there's three mains. And I'm just gonna go through these very quickly, all right? There's grapevine, there's feet together, which is what we taught in the low mount class when we taught it to this, this student base. And then there's feet crossed, which I do not like at all, okay? Uh, feet together is good, but you need to bring your heels up close to their butt, mm -hmm. right? Um, so get me in uh, low mount and we'll do it this way. Yes. Okay, so let's start with great bonds. Just hands on the mat. Okay, so all I have to do when there are great bonds involved is pick a side and put my palm underneath it. Here. We're done. Alrighty, got my guard back. Dolly Tudo this time. Submitting and hitting. Okay. Go here. So he's got great binds. Lift, kick out, circle. And I'm out. I'm just turn to the camera to complete the rotation. Go back. Okay. Feet crossed. This can um this can suck, right? Uh, but it can suck for him if I know the counter. Let's turn this way. See how his feet are crossed here? What you need to know is which one's on top. It's that one, right? Now, once I know which one's on top, I'm gonna circle my feet to the low side here to get out, okay? But before I do that, I wanna add weight here. Oh, he fell over. Come back. Add some weight, pendulum, and there's my knee over. Good. And then feet together. This is the better one, but again, it's not perfect. Here. Add weight. All right, I want my, my legs on the floor there, and it's like just the weight of my leg. I want to keep my heels off the floor, lifting my hips up. Now I just pick a side, and I circle that side and the elbow okay so let's see if we can walk you through all three of those real quick okay now <clears throat> well great vines here lift up nice go ahead and recover the guard all the way good Okay, feet are crossed. Legs straight, add weight. Which one's on top? Yes, you're right. The one furthest from the camera, okay? So uh, what I want you to do is swing your hips in a pendulum to the bottom side and then back to the top side to escape. Yes, recover. Nice. Okay, lastly, um, my feet are together. So they're crossed, you need to know which one's on top. If they're together, just add weight to both of them. Good, now circle one to the inside on the side you want to escape on. Uh-huh, beautiful job. Easy peasy, right? <clears throat> so, guys, again, you know, that's, Fundamentals and, and really, you know, this is this is how the curriculum is set up to kind of have these variations in it. Knee elbow escape comes up from side control, and then if somebody is moving from side control to mount, we'll see those situations in future classes. Okay, but what we need to uh, keep in mind is that when you learn a technique, like I'll encourage Mike several times, like, hey, you know, you haven't seen this, you know, yet, or you hadn't done it a lot. Like we're just learning it today. This is a new drill in the program. Let's go a little slower. Right? And, you know, that's, uh, we don't want to overload you, but we do want you to understand the elbow is a fundamental. 
You can do it from everywhere, different positions. And that really doesn't matter how they hold you in mount. You could kneel by a low mount three different ways. All of those are low mounts, right? So um, that is a good, uh, good overview for, for the beginners, right? And just um, look at the first one and then maybe pick one of those uh, low mount counters. I really like the great one. If I had to pick between three, second favorites, feet crossed, because people do that. Lessons to take from this though. Do you think crossing the feet's a good idea? Oh, I hate it. Yeah, because yeah, they're like, well, he might do that thing, right? So context, we gather context. We don't have to memorize like every nuance of every variation of every technique. That could tell you right there, like, hmm, when I hold them out, I don't think I'm gonna cross my feet. Oh, is the low mount really, you know, like, wh what if he tries, oh, pull your heels in tighter, it'll be harder to add weight, right? So that's that, uh, and that's it for class today, all right? Good work.